Welcome everybody to the second in our series of conversations with communicators we love. My name is Nanada Mosechiyama and I am absolutely delighted to be speaking to a woman I love very much, Françoise Mudute. Françoise, welcome to today's conversation. Thank you so much for having me, I'm excited. Can I just start by saying you look gorgeous? I love that coral on you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and I like to start these conversations by saying what I love about our guest, because, you know, we're calling it Comes We Love for a Good Reason. Makita Pio has identified a short list of African feminist communicators that we have a lot of love for, and we want the whole world to get to know a lot more. So I actually want to start by telling you what I love about you as a communicator. Do tell. <laughs> I love I love your blog, Ayala blog. I think it's an amazing resource. I love the the work and the love and the care that I can see has gone into creating a space to profile African feminists from all sorts of backgrounds. I love that you do communications in English and French. I know those are still colonial, colonial languages. And so, you know, in a way they're still limiting to us, but it allows for a lot more people to be part of a conversation. I love, love, love your Sunday reads on Twitter. I look forward to those. It always tells me articles that I need to read, articles that I should have on my list. And sometimes I even get to see articles in which I've been profiled. So it's like, yay. I love your Instagram. I, I just feel like you use digital tools in a really in a really helpful way to uplift African feminist stories and stories that are important and need some amplification. So yes, this is what I love about you. Just wanted you to, Thank you to so hear that. Much. You know what? It means everything to me to hear it first because uh, I, when, I told you when you emailed me, I was like, you know, I'm not really a communicator, right? <laughs> but also because it's coming from you. I really have like, such deep love for you and for your work and appreciation for, you know, like really the trend that you're like open for us to, to, to get in. So if you say it, I'm like, yes, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate the encouragement. I just say it. So can you just start by telling us a little bit about yourself for people who don't know you? Who is Francoise? So, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an African feminist. That's the first thing everybody needs to, to know about me before everything else, um, because I'm a fully African, fully feminist and not apologizing for any of it, even though I know both of them are quite complicated. So I'm from Cameroon uh, and uh, this is where I'm from, but I've really spent a good half of my life um, in France, which is where I spent my formative years. Uh, and for the past uh, almost 10 years, I've been back on the continent, currently living in Morocco, previously in Senegal. I am a, a feminist strategist, is what I think is most accurate to say. So I love to talk about uh, how do we, either as individuals or organizations, what do, can we do to move the needle for women's rights in, in Africa? And so I do that by getting people to figure out what is the unique contribution, because there's so much that needs to be done, right? Not everybody can do everything, uh, but also when you do something, it needs to be something that is really rooted in what you are able to do best. So that's really my obsession. Um, I've worked in uh, the NGO sector on women's rights for the past 10 years or so, currently working as a consultant. And lastly, and for this, actually, I should say, firstly, um, the founder of Eyala. Uh, which is a blog, uh, a platform really that uh, uplifts, it's a great word to use, uh, the, the lived experiences and stories of African feminists in French and English, lots of work. Uh, and also um, that really also creates spaces for us to connect. So it's like the voices and the spaces, all of which is really rooted in sisterhood. And can you tell us like what inspired you to create Ayala and when did Ayala start? Right. I think curiosity and frustration. 
Uh, I, like, <laughs> I love that combination, <laughs> curiosity, frustration. It really is the most accurate thing I could say. I think, you know, I was working in an NGO and I was, I was um, coordinating a, a fantastic cohort of uh, African feminists who were working to end child marriage. And I was so frustrated uh, because I wanted to have, I was curious about like, not just what they knew, the expertise, but I was curious about the experiences. I was like, so yes, okay, you know everything about child marriage and we can talk about that, but can we also talk about like, why do you care so much? What does that mean to you? How do you embody, like, you know, like the, the politics that are behind all the policies you advocate for, you know, like all of this stuff. And I was like, why is this not on the agenda of any meeting, any, so, I, did, I was curious, so I was asking questions, but it was always like on the sides by the buffet in the elevator. I was very intrusive. I'm sorry for everybody. I asked very personal questions as they were trying to eat lunch, but it's really that curiosity. And I was so frustrated that we didn't have the space for it. And I was like, you know what? I need to create that space for myself uh, because I want those conversations. Um, and yeah, I think that's, that's really it. I, I think part of it is also, I was trying to, uh, explore those questions for myself because I'm not like somebody who uh, grew up being very I didn't grow up feminist you know like I, I, I wasn't even really thinking about those issues so much I was working on conflict studies I just women's rights studied as an assignment to it to me and then I got so curious and I like, became an advocate and then a feminist and I was like now I need to know more but I grow through conversation, so I needed conversation. So Ayala is really a home for the conversations I really long to have and that I'm just hoping that people also want to hear, so I'm sharing them. And for those who may not have read some of those conversations, maybe can you mention a few of the people you've had conversations with and is there anything that really sort of stayed with you from some of those conversations? Yeah, I think that one of the most striking conversations for me was with uh, Dr. T. Uh, Tlaleng Mokofang from uh, South Africa, who is a uh, uh, sexual and, reprodu sexual and reprodu reproductive health and rights um, uh, advocate and a medical doctor who wrote a fantastic book that everybody must read <laughs> about uh, sexual pleasure and sexual health. Um, and it was so interesting because she was just going straight to the point and uh, in terms of like those issues, but we also were able to explore parts of her life that are not really things that she talks about much, like how she positions herself as a black woman in the international de development sector, things like that. I also like that I'm looking at what's happening in the diaspora as well. So I had a great chat with uh, Aisha Tuwatara, who uh, is a, one of the first uh, francophone uh, bloggers on African feminism and Afrofeminism, which is not the same. So it's like feminism as women as led by women present in Europe. So, and, and we spoke about like religion, privilege, so many things. So basically the, the bottom line for me is to explore experience over expertise and really intimacy. So like really looking at those feminist values that you advocate for, how do they, how are they infused in your daily life? How do you manage or not manage? you know, to, to do that. So it's a space for connection and really deep truth is really what I'm looking for. I really love that connection and really deep truth. And I know Ayala is, is a platform and that when you're in different countries around the world, sometimes you bring women together to have conversations. Yeah. I mean, clearly in this current moment, there's a pause in that, but I wonder if you can reflect on some of those, I think you call them sister circles that you've held and what was the magic that came out of those spaces? I, and I, I say magic because I've heard people say it was magic. Really? Yes. Yeah, I'm glad because that's how it feels to me as well. Uh, the sister circles are really, it started with an intuition. Uh, I was like, though, there were some themes that were coming out of the, uh, the conversations and one of them was sisterhood. Uh, and it was very strong. And, and when we, I was finishing, Every okay, or every interview, the interviewee would tell me it would be so great if we had those conversations in a group, and so would also the the readers. 
And so last year I was going to Women Deliver, which is a, a massive uh, regular conference on women's rights. And I was just like, if only I could bring like all of my fans at, at Women Deliver, can we just get in a room? I was really lucky to have a foundation, uh, you know, like help me with a bit of seed funding to just basically rent a room and food and wine. <laughs> and then uh, and then we just sat there and we said, okay, let's talk about the sisterhood. And what happened there is like, it was not like a conference or anything like that. It was like literally a circle uh, where we all took responsibility for documenting. And the only rule was confidentiality and truth. So speak your truth, you are safe to say whatever you want and you don't have to, to go to perform. I think for me, like I feel like as women, as black women, as African women, the urge to perform or and the pressure to perform is so large. I really feel it. Um, and I felt, especially in a conference, like you are on your high heels, you know, like, you know, nicely caught, you like have to be, to speak your best English. You have to be super smart the whole week. And it was towards the end of the week. And I was like, my friends, you know, this is just us. Let's just be. And it was absolutely magical. And I was like, I can't just stop here. So I started doing it on the side of like work travel, personal travel. So I've had five so far. And it's true that with COVID, um, it's come uh, down. But interesting, last weekend, a few uh, of us, uh, a few of the readers and friends just said, we really need a space for us to process what is happening now with uh, you know, Black Lives Matter and all of the conversations is raised, especially in the international development sector. And so I hosted my first uh, online uh, sister circle, which was just as magical. I didn't expect, I, was, I had a lot of concerns because also who wants to be on Zoom right now if you don't have to, right? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was magical. Amazing, amazing. And I wanted to tell us a little bit about your inspiration for starting the Sunday Reads you do on, on Twitter every Sunday without fail. Yeah, not without fail. <laughs> it feels to me like it's without fail. Okay, then I haven't noticed when you haven't done it because you're that consistent. I'm, glad that I'm able to fool you, so I'm a pro. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the, you know, yes, I, I feel like I love to read. I, I love to read uh, and and because on social media, especially on Twitter, I follow everybody. I, I literally follow everybody and the sisters, the mamas, because I want to know what are the conversations, what are people reading. But the thing is, I have so much work uh, I have with the kids and I just don't have time to read. So I now packed, I just I bookmark everything using a great app that's called Pockets that really helps me remove uh, all the tabs I have. Uh, this is not a sponsored post. And also, <laughs> And I was just like, you know, I have this time that I carve for myself to read, and it's on Sundays. And I, when I read, I always, uh, I always love to like share articles with my friends. Like, oh, you should read this. What do you think about this? And I was like, can I just do it on Twitter? I'm doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. So I started doing it. Um, I never actually, at the beginning, I didn't think anybody was reading because you know people don't like or tweet or what a retweet or anything. So a few people respond, but I keep getting people saying oh i love your thread i'm like oh you read it so <laughs> so and it's become a bit of a habit uh, in the, a couple of times in the past month or so i didn't do it one because once because just the news was too heavy i was like i needed time to process mm -hmm. another day because it was the end of the lockdown and my kids wanted to go to the beach <laughs> but i'm trying to do it as much as possible i think i need to start to find a way to not do it on sunday so i can be i just catch up in case I'm not that organized, I'm afraid. No, I was actually going to ask you, you sound super organized with like using pockets to bookmark your readings. And I'm wondering if there are any tips and tricks you would like to share in terms of, you know, what helps you be a good communicator? I think uh, I'm not as organized as I would love to be, especially for the comms work, because I think for me, I have stumbled into this communication work. So as I said earlier, I wanted, I basically wanted to explore something, to have a number of conversations. So for me, it was not about communications, but about conversation. And then here we are. I'm not using communications to, to do this thing. So I'm really trying to figure out a lot of the things as I do them, which is not my favorite way of doing things because I'm an absolute perfectionist. So, 
I find it frustrating, but that's just the way things are going. That's where we are. Um, but so I'm learning tips from a lot of friends, great communicators like you and others. And I think the few tips that I've had, uh, I've really that have really helped me. The first one has, has been to really be clear on my values. So what are the values that I'm trying to uh, that I'm trying to serve and you know like bring into all of my work? So for example, I'm really trying to be kind uh, and loving. This, this is a core value of my work. So that means as much as I want to drag some you know like stupid ass people with their comments on 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 i don't know feminism is not african or whatever thing we've heard before um i, I just don't do it I I've, I've dedicated my um i dedicated my platform to be a place of celebration of great people uh that i think are doing great work uh and so i don't really use my platform to troll. I have to admit I did it once, but the guy had it coming. He went to troll. <laughs> I mean, every, every, everybody has a moment. <laughs> my friend, we came from one of us and we like did a proper takedown. But mm -hmm. usually it's not something that I would I would do. So I think really in like rooting my, my communications work in my values so that sometimes I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Sometimes it really does feel that way because I'm like I don't know the tools. I'm not I'm not I'm not like somebody who knows how to schedule things because I, it comes from the heart. So it's always in the moment. Sometimes I don't have time, you know. So I do note down all of my ideas. I have notebooks everywhere, uh, but I also really make sure I always it has to pass that test. One, is it true? Like, is it coming from my truth? Mm -hmm. And two, it kinds. Right. If I want to take somebody down, I'm still going to call my friends and bitch about that person. But that platform is not the place for that. I, I really want to to communicate a place for yeah for kindness, love. I think for me for sisterhood. So I, it's also very celebratory. So I'm always like celebrating uh, the feminist sisters who are doing things, who are saying things, you know. And that is very very important for me. I know it's not a very practical tip. But it is probably the one that I, I use most often. I think for me, it actually sounds not just like a practical tip, but just like a really heartwarming, inspiring tip, to be honest. And as somebody who's been on Twitter for a really long time and who actually got on Twitter and found it to be a place where I found community, mm -hmm. I can find the sort of negativity on Twitter now, at, like, really draining so i don't spend yeah. as much time on twitter anymore i spend a lot of time on instagram because i feel like i need happy spaces you know um and i know the call out is also part of holding people accountable mm. but i also i think just in general i also prefer to like spotlight the positive so exactly yeah it's for me i i really appreciate having a space like ayala which is uplifting which is amplifying, you know, which is magnifying. It's it's really important. And I wanted to come back to like a sort of brief conversation you and I were having just before the life started, you know, and you said this to me before, like you don't think of yourself as a communicator. Why don't you think of yourself as a communicator? Because I, when I was thinking of communicators, you popped into my head, you know? I mean, you know, because I guess because my intention is not to communicate. My intention is to explore and to articulate, to uplift, uh, but it's not to like communicate in the traditional, you know, way of doing things. So to be honest, before I formed, I, I created Ayala, I was not on Instagram. I was barely on Twitter as I had an account, but I, I had like two tweets. Uh, I just found it over found it overwhelming too much. I still do actually too much information, etc. But I just felt like I I I I don't communicate publicly. I think, uh, but now I have this exploration and this articulation work that I want to do because I I feel that need for myself because I'm on that feminist journey, and I cannot process in a, something without conversation. So at some point I was like, oh, so I have those conversations. Uh, how do I get people to have the conversations to me? And if I have them to myself, it's just not enough. Like, how can I, if I need them, others need them. That's something I always feel like. If I need something, I'm probably not the only one. Uh, so 
I just started communicating. So, so you have the platform. You want people to come to the platform, or maybe you need a Twitter account. You know, like those things. And yes. so I find myself communicating. Uh, and but I just don't feel like it's my main purpose. It is my tool that I use, and I do so. And I know that as a communicator, um, I, I I should say it also because the community of communicators, uh, when you try to you get trainings, etc. Often, what comes back is uh, people who are looking for likes, who are looking for a wider audience, or who are looking to monetize. Mm -hmm. And I'm not. So I also feel like the community is not talking to the things I need. You know, like I'm not an influencer, as in I don't in the you know Instagram. You know, everybody's always like when I do a training, I want to know how I can be more. For example, one of my challenges, I want to be more consistent uh, in like how often I post and all of these things. But all people are talking about in the trainings, how do you monetize? I'm like, this is not about money for me, like leave me alone. So yes. I also feel like this community of communicators are not talking to the things that I want to do. So for those, for both of those reasons, I feel like, yes, I communicate, but is that enough to call myself a communicator? It's really a question I ask myself. Hmm. It's a great question. I guess it depends upon how you identify. I mean, I definitely think of myself as a communicator, mm -hmm. but I think that's also because really from the age of 16, I decided that I wanted to work in communications. And I don't even think I knew what that meant. You know, I had this idea that I would be this like glam head of some communications agency who would go to like fancy receptions at night and be swanning all over the world. <laughs> Instead, I ended up as a feminist communicator, which I love, you know? <laughs> yes. Just not as glam. <laughs> just not as glam. No, just not as glam. I, I find moments to bring in the glam, but you know, yes, yes. So I want to just go to some, yeah, I, I, I just want to come to some personal topics. Not that personal, not what you're thinking about. But really, wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready for it. <laughs> no, 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 we have those conversations on adventures, not on my key up here. But then I wanted to find out about how you take care of yourself. What do you do to, yeah, take care of yourself? Um, hmm, I'm not so good at it. <laughs> I'm not so good at it, I have to say, because of, uh, I think I'm. Um, yeah, I come from a background that has really uh, revered, revered, is that in English? Sorry, I'm French speaking. But yeah, um, her dad has been obsessed with excellence. So I come from that, like I need to unlearn that really. Uh, but I'm a, I'm a huge, like, I want to do everything. I have so many ideas. I want to act on all of them and do it really well in all of those things, right? So I do a lot and um, and I get excited about new ideas I engage and I realize I don't have time for them. So I, I do stretch myself in terms of work, but also because I love work. Uh, so, so I end up not taking time for myself much, but what I've learned to do, uh, what I've learned about myself is that silence is very important. I'm a real introvert as it is I spend time with people, including my family. I need to recharge. I need some time to recharge. So I can tell you the lockdown was not fun from that perspective. Mm -hmm. um, but um, so I have started to once a year, a uh, couple of years ago, I've done that uh, for the first time. And now it's a tradition, family tradition, everybody knows in the family, once a year, I take one week off for myself. Um, and uh, I just go away, no work, no husband, no kids, books, notebooks, and music and I just and just receive what happens that's when I have my best ideas that I really recharge in ways that are unbelievable fully recommend to anybody the second thing I do is also try and fit in moments of silence and reconnecting with myself throughout my week be it like a few minutes of journaling or I found this five minutes medication meditation for children that I use because I'm also I'm not a quiet I'm a very restless mind I think that's something I said about me so to quiet my mind or really to make the best use of the times I find myself alone in the car you know things like that but silence is my best um, way of self care and the second way is really systemic like the time I spend with my girls is everything to me everything. 
uh, or they're on the phone, the conversations I have with them are really uh, my biggest source of self-care. And I can see your face light up when you talk about uh, that. <laughs> really, really, really true. So my final question is, can you... Can you finish? What do I, you know, I know, right? I could chat to you forever. Yes, yes. <laughs> tell me, tell me. But my final question is, tell us about something you're either reading, watching, or listening to that you think is either really fun, really enjoyable, and you know, you'd like to share with others. Hmm, how can I choose? Uh, if it's only going to be one, I would say I recently read um, Mona Etahawi's book, uh, which is called The Se Seven Necessary Sins for Women and Girls. That book is like, you know when you drink coffee, but you're not a coffee drinker, and you go, <laughs> ah, you know, that is the book from like the introduction. Okay. You're like, wow, you know? <laughs> Clearly, I'm not going to do any work today. So it's something that really puts, rekindles that uh, fire, feminist fire. Uh, and I, and it's also written in a way that is very accessible. Uh, really, you can feel her spirit through the pages. I re it's a recent read that uh, I really enjoyed. We, I'm, uh, I'm part of a, a small uh, African feminist book club and we discussed it it was supposed to be for an hour i don't know we spoke for like three hours because we wow. were so it's, uh -huh. it's been a great great read and then music wise i've been coming back to india ari's music at the moment i think her music has been the soundtrack of my life my since i met her musically uh and uh, currently i have needed uh, music so yeah mm -hmm. Beautiful. And is there anything else that you would like to chat about that I haven't asked you about? I think I wanted to ask you a question, actually. I think uh, <laughs> I think one thing that I've been, if I am going to think of myself as a communicator, one thing that I've, um, I've admired so much about you is your discipline. And I do find that discipline is not something that you, you kind of tend to find in creative people, right? I'm, I, and I don't have much of it, to be honest. I have a lot of work discipline when it comes to finding accountability for the work that you create for yourself, not the one that you do for people who pay you, etc. I found that my most important work, which is Ayala, is the one I, I tend to put in the back burner just because everything else, you know, I have external accountability. But this one, I'm, I'm accountable to myself. And I really struggle with that because I keep pushing it back and then it doesn't get done. And I get really, actually I get a lot of anxiety and shame from it and it's a bad circle. So please help me out of this. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, the thing that I learned is if there's, if there's anything that you really want to do, figure out what the support system is that you need to get it done. Right. And part of what has helped me with my writing, for example, has been having writing writing dates you know the different writing partners i've had over the years and we have regular writing dates and, and they are fun yeah so we, we meet up you know we say sometimes we chat for 30 minutes and then we start writing now these writing dates are happening virtually previously you know sometimes it would happen physically i'll meet up with say one of my girlfriends we'll have a glass of wine chat for an hour and then we'll be like right let's get out our laptops and write whoa you know? i love this yes so that's something that I always recommend. And as usual, if you're doing something with somebody else, you feel that pressure to show up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And also the other thing I do as well is I'm not a perfectionist. If I have an idea, I just start, you know? Okay. Um, adventures came to me on a beach holiday. I came back, rang Malaika, we spoke about it, we started. I don't overthink things. If I feel passionate about it and I really want to do it, I'll just go for it because you figure it out as you go along. For me, if you try and have the perfect plan, you know, then it can become a struggle. Um, and the other thing I've learned now is just to always find people to do things with. So with the Adventures Life Festival, when the idea came, my first thought was get a working group, you know, bring the working group together, yeah. sit, chat, have food. Not. <laughs> <I'm getting not. laughs> and then everybody will work together to make it happen. So oh. just get more support. If there's something you're struggling to do, just get more support. So there's probably somebody else who wants to blog as often as you do. Meet with that person, 
once every week or once every two weeks and work on your blogs together. Yeah. That's great advice. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I knew I was right to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. For to us, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Please shout out your various platforms. We have a caller who tells people to follow Yala blog, but maybe there's more and other spaces that you want to like spotlight. So please do. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. It was really fun. I can't believe it's already over. Um, but yes, please find me on Ayala, uh, E Y A L A dot blog. Uh, which is a bilingual blog, uh, and uh, so yeah, you, you can also learn some French from it. And also on Twitter at Ayala Blog, on Instagram same at Ayala Blog, and on Facebook mostly in French actually on Facebook at Ayala Blog as well. That's it. And that was one thing I forgot to say. I love that you. No, I did say it. I did say I love that you work in both languages. Okay, I thought I forgot yeah. to say that. Right. <laughs> it's a political choice. <laughs> yes, it's an amazing political choice. All right, so I love you loads. See you thank on the interwebs. Bye. Bye. Thank you so Bye. much. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Bye.